Okay, folks, um, I've got to make a plate um, to attach to the RTI circle that attaches to the back of the holster so that I can attach this piece to the drop leg uh, platform from Black Hawk. Okay, and I've been working on it for a few minutes. I found a piece of uh, pretty damn stiff sheet metal. You can see it in my vise, and I've already cut it out. It was... Uh, it's actually the uh, gas tank holder for uh, an old snap. Okay. So the piece I cut off was this rectangle piece on this end. And I just cut a little bit cut and break it off or cut it completely off. And I cut a little bit and I cut a little bit. But the, the way I started out, it was, it was still a full piece. It was this wide over here. Took a standard pencil, laid this baby out on top of it, traced out my circle, okay? And what I'm using is just a standard high quality hacksaw with a good blade. This was my dad's. A uh, um, triangular file, I can't remember what they call that thing. A standard mill file or mill bastard. And a rat tail uh, chainsaw uh, chainsaw uh, file there you go but biggest thing is i'm cutting it out it's it's not perfect and then i'm gonna take the file and file it around and these two here when i get into a corner or something i use them to get it where i can get the angle on the blade correct so i can saw a little bit more but we're using the vise and you got to make damn sure your vise is pretty pretty stout and it's well connected to your bench um because it's going to move around with you. I'll give you a short demonstration. I'll cut one piece and then I'll shut the camera off because otherwise it'll take forever and a damn day and you probably don't want to see all that. But it gives you an idea of how to do it. But this is pretty damn thick sheet metal. Um, that was the old, old model um, um, snapper rear rider. And that thing has been gone a long time. But I had that piece of metal laying around, and you never can tell with some of this stuff what you can use it for in the future. And like right now, I'll have this little thin, lightweight, strong adapter plate that I'll punch five holes in so it'll uh, connect to this, and I'll probably use rivets. And then I'll put the three small holes in it that will align with the Black Hawk. All right, now, you know, you got... Just think in the boil. Well, let's get it on here. Okay, I'll just start right down here at the bottom of each of these slots and the very center of that slot, and that'll give me my three um, spots to drill my holes. Okay, and I want the drill just a touch bigger, the drill bit to be just a touch bigger than the actual screws. But anywho, let's uh, get on with it. And I'm not trying to cut on, dead on the line because you'll never get it to go that damn straight. If you got a real good sharp blade, and this is a brand new blade, this is the first time I've actually used it. It should start pretty quick and easy, but if you get too close to the line, you're liable to cut into it, which I, I've done just a touch right there, but that's not enough to matter. And then I'll use the, uh, like I said, the files to clean it up, shape it up, and all that. So we got one piece cut. I'll cut another piece to show you, and then I'll stop the camera. All right, so we already got it going around now. I'll show you. Take this flat file, and this is not one of my better files. It's a little rusty and all. It's a little dull, but it works all right. But what we're going to do is just shave it and stay. Uh, we don't want to go inside the line. We want to stay outside that damn line. So we're going to knock all the high spots off. 
there's a nice high spot right there. If you angle it on the sides, you can cut all the, uh, you can get all the little burrs and all off of it without, so it will gouge you up. When you're done, you take a sharpie marker and run all the way around that edge, and you lightly file all the way around, okay? And you can see where the low spots and high spots are. If you want to dress it up pretty, you do not have to do that, but you can if you would like to. Pretty. Freaking close. I mean, you can do this with the power tool or whatever, but you're apt to make more mistakes with the power tool, so I don't, I don't worry about it. Turn it just a touch. Clamp it back down good and tight. Okay. I mean, it's not hard. It's not hard to do. Um, biggest thing, even if your, your cut's too shallow, that's fine. Go ahead and finish it out because you can't make it turn if the blade's too wide and it'll make the blade stick. Okay. You can see I pretty much knocked all the paint off of it today. I'll make one more just for craps and giggles and then I'll, then I'll uh, finish it and then I'll show you the finished product before I drill the holes. And I'll tell you something else, and this is where the little rat tail slash chainsaw uh, file comes in handy. If you if it's hard to start, just make you a little divot. And it makes it a whole lot easier to get the saw to start in the direction you want it to go. Like I said, a little, a little shallow is one thing. A little deep is too much. If the angle's off, you'll cut in beyond the line, and you need to stop right there. All right. And we're just cutting little tiny pieces off. I mean... You may get them a little bigger, a little smaller, whatever the case may be, but they're, they're tiny pieces. Um, you see, some of your pieces may be a little bit bigger. You want to make sure you get all these off your floor, your kids get a hold of that or whatever, or you step on it, and it might could jug a hole right through your damn work boot and eat your butt up real good. All right, there's pretty much the finished product. It's got a little flat spot there. whoop do freaking do Turn it and hide it right behind that. No big deal. It's a touch bigger which is absolutely perfectly fine that it will be getting a paint job but that came from a rectangular piece of steel using a hacksaw and a couple of files there you go and you can see uh one spot there i let my thing blade get a little too uh the angle was too deep and well i must have uh trimmed off the other one because there was another one but that's the only place I think it came out pretty damn good. And now what we got to do is we're just going to lay this on top of it and get it pretty centered up. Take my pencil, draw my spots for my holes, take it to the drill press, drill each one out after I discover what size the uh, screw is and make it just a touch. Bit. Okay, folks, so how do I, how am I going to attach the adapter plate to this after I drill the holes? First thing we need to know is what size holes um that you're gonna need okay so i found some uh eighth inch okay that's the shank size of the uh um the pop rivet with a quarter inch diameter pop rivet okay and what you do is on the pop rivets if you'll read on the side of the freaking the carton box whatever it is it'll tell you what size drill bit and this one here will use a number 11 
Now, a lot of people may or may not have a very big assortment of drill bits. Uh, I do. And we've got the number 11 right here. Okay, folks. I've got the plate centered over the center hole. I've got it clamped down with a big C clamp. I've pulled my bit down before I even started and got it and made sure it was absolutely centered up on the mark. I'm going to drill one or two holes. Now, if this was thick steel, you would definitely need to use some type of, uh, like, uh, some type of machine cutting oil or whatever the case may be to ensure that you keep the drill bit nice and cool. Otherwise, it will dull up very quickly. This is very thin sheet metal. It should pop right through it. You want to make sure you go plunge all the way through it and come back up a couple of times in and out to make sure you get it completely squared away. And I think I have the bit tight enough. Um... So without further ado, because I left my damn safety glasses in the house, I'm going to use their shield. I like my balls. Just fine. Thank you very much. And you saw the bit got stuck right as right at the very end. Why in God's name they don't make the damn the shank of the bit a better <clears throat> I mean, uh, square is beyond me or triangular. do is just loosen the clamp turn it do the same thing make sure it's centered and cut the other four holes so I'll do that and then start the camera again okay folks I had to reshoot this section of the video because I screwed up earlier and I'm not taking all this crap apart because it's a pain in the neck this is a temporary deal um, I've got to get some flathead some better uh, screws for the actual uh, adapter plate to mount to the platform Cause these have a rounded head and I need a flatter head and I'm going to have uh, Chicago screws eventually in this I just didn't have any uh, and I've got to go to Home Depot and a couple other places today so I'm gonna pick those up and then later on I'll put it roll in a video of, of that but um, in order to get your screws your holes to mount the adapter plate because you got to mount it to the platform first in order to get it you, what you have to do is just lay the plate down, get it sort of, get it as square as you can, go on the back side. And you can see under the straps here. Okay, I guess that some bitch is focusing. You never can tell with this camera. But you just, you've got your holes on the back, and you uh, run your pencil through there, make your marks, take it over to drill press, drill it out, bring it back, and bolt it right on. Um, I would definitely put some Loctite on them to, uh, or nylock uh, self-locking nuts in order to make damn sure it doesn't back off. But I wanted to make sure I got that because I was thinking in my head for whatever reason that I'm going to take the screws and screw into this. Well, that's not how it works. On the Serpa as well as on the this one here, the screws go into the holster. Okay, they got the uh, hardware built into the holster just like on these screws down here and I'm about to start modification they uh, they will not they said they'll give me my money back for the holster I mean for the light cowling or the entire holster but they they don't there's no way they can modify this so I'm going to modify it myself because I've already went through all this damn trouble and I'm gonna make it work and bet you ass let me that. add this um, final fit very good. I moved the straps up closer so that the straps are up closer to my groin and it's it's moved in really good and tight. I can get all the way down, squat with it. It's very fast on the draw. I mean, very fast on the draw. Let me pull this camera back a little bit. So, works really well. If I only had the friggin' light, I'd be totally 100% satisfied with my purchase, but without the light cowling working, I am very disappointed. Um, 
the whole point of me wasting my 11 weeks was to have one that would work and apparently that just ain't gonna happen so there you go but you know it's fast to get the handgun out just the handgun but like i said i ain't 100 percent satisfied all right folks we um got the holster mounted to the uh the platform the black hawk platform and the way it is on there it actually angles the gun outward and i think that is part of the uh, design of the black hawk uh, drop down platform but it's fine and what i'm going to wind up doing is putting some padding at the bottom to push the gun out make it more vertical than leaning out because i don't want it snagging and hitting every damn thing as a walk by the holster itself as i've stated it fits the gun very well very securely it's very fast on the draw i put up a little short video on facebook showing the draw um it's very quick the act of pushing down on the button actually helps you draw the gun out so that's very quick but i could actually got the uh black hawk serpa holster that would have fit fitted without any modification just for the gun um but they don't make one for the, with the light um so you can attach the light the cowling is about a 30 seconds of an inch too shallow right here at the top um it's perfectly fitted to the light the light fits right in it just as as snug as a bug in a rug but it will not fit on the gun okay and i know it's not going to focus on it it never does so how about that right there um i'll be honest with you as disappointing as i'll get out but there's nothing else that can be done with i don't know i mean i could heat it and possibly maybe get something out of it but i just don't see it the way it's formed it's formed perfectly in there to accept that particular type of light it's got little notches built in it to sort of lock help lock it in there so i really don't it's just too short here because of that 1913 16 reel that's what i told him when i when i ordered it i said you've got to make sure that it'll fit with the 1913 16 reel and this is perfect flawlessly executed it is snug it's got a little up and down play in it um i don't see if you're running i don't see that's going to be a big deal and if you're walking it doesn't do anything um it doesn't rock back and forth it's mounted but still i can't do anything with the uh without the cowling so I'm ticked off about that. But this is a $15 part. But I paid as much for the holster, including this $15 part, as I would have for the entire leg rig and a Serpa holster. So, yeah, I'm disappointed with it. So I'm going to see if they'll either make one a touch longer or... If they won't, I'll see if I can stretch it. I just don't see how it's going. It's it's such a perfect fit. I mean, it's not even in, in on the you know on the gun or anything. It just slides. It locks in. Does everything you want it to do. It just freaking will not fit um, the cowling. And I'm not going to sit there and try to shave down the uh, Picatinny rail on a fifteen hundred dollar gun for a lousy $164 holster. That is not going to happen. I just don't see any other way. So we'll find out what they will do, if anything. And uh, I'll let you guys know, but as of right now, I've got the handgun, a holster for it. Uh, let me show you guys one quick, the, the things. It's got these two little tabs here on the back side. You push them in and pull it up and out. So you've got the, the holster and you can buy a part easily to hook to your belt or whatever and you can put it right back on there um we get it in there because of the way i had to modify it's a little tight getting it back and you push that in it's locked 
But anywho, there you go. Um, ended up using instead of um, um, rivets, I ended up using little machine screws, locking uh, um, uh, some lock washers and some little nuts on it. Um, it's on there. It, it works. It's solid. But I am disappointed I cannot mount the light on there because that's whole, you know, that was the whole damn point of having that, you know, buying a custom fit holster. We'll see what they'll do, and I, like I said, I'll let you guys know. Um, I will say this. If you have one that doesn't have a 1913 rail, I would imagine with a light cowling, it'll fit just like that. But a 1913 rail has the middle spec dimensions that are required by the military. So that all the accessories that fit a 1913 rail will fit on their firearms, their rifles, as well as handguns. So, you know, anywho, that's what we have so far. This is Mac Daddy 1911 May 1. Signing off. Thank you very much for watching. Y'all take care.